It's time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode of the Up North Journal podcast is brought to you by PSE Archery. Carbon Express. Fourth Arrow Camera Arms. Wind Scent Hunting Sense. Killer Food Plots. Seeds, Supplements, and Attractants. Cabela's. Spot Shooters. Limb Walker Game Calls. Twisted Minds Bowstrings. Hunter's Blend Coffee. Antler Action. And Family Traditions Tree Stand. And don't forget, you can catch us in syndication at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on goodtalkradio.com. Welcome back to another episode of the Upmark Journal, everybody. We haven't talked to you guys since last year. Yes, last year we haven't talked. Last week. But as always, we got our Hunter's Blend here on a great Sunday afternoon. Hunter's Blend Coffee. Danny, you got the promo code there for the good people if they would like to get some and save some money? Absolutely. You go to the website, huntersblendcoffee.com. That's the first thing you do. Then as you're checking out, you go ahead and you use the promo code capital UNJ for an added 10% off your purchase. Got to like that. You absolutely do. But pretty warm weekend to be drinking coffee. Yeah. Well, it, it has been nice. Actually, this week we've had temperatures a couple days here in the 40s. I think we hit 50 one day, if I'm not mistaken. I think we had 50 yesterday. So yeah. I know because I took the Christmas lights down, and huh? it was actually nice to take them down. Was the pizza guy able to find your house? No. <laughs> It's it's the one with the Christmas lights. Was now those are all gone, but right. it was so nice to take them down in in decent weather and not have to you know freeze or just say I'll wait till April to take them down. Right on. So, but you know what? I'm glad it's over with. Now we can get on to 2019. Bigger and better things. Have a good start to the new year so far. So far, so good. Mm-hmm. Good deal. Yeah. Done anything uh, exciting this week at all? Uh, this week, no, not really. Uh, it was just a kind of a I. Get back to work week and okay, you know, you kind of easing into everything going on and nothing in the outdoors, nothing in the outdoors except being outside taking down Christmas lights and watching watching the big squirrels out back. Okay, well, I got out and shot the bow yesterday. Nice. You know, uh, the reason we're doing the show today at four o'clock on the live stream is for the simple fact that Danny and I are going to be shooting indoor targets uh, starting today at seven o'clock. Right, an indoor archery league. So. Uh, I figured it was time to get out and and just run some arrows downrange with uh, the Phenom SD. And uh, you know, I had it out I think a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. I mentioned for Christmas, right before Christmas, and uh, had a little tuning to do and and got it dialed in. So there I don't. Know, we'll see what happens tonight. So hopefully everything goes well. Ben Lalon says he's got his new bow all sighted in. Nice. So Santa was good to him. Yes. He. I don't know. We talked about that in studio last, or was it last week? Last year. Yeah. Last year. <laughs> yeah, last week, last year. Uh, Matt Howard is, says it's good squirrel hunting weather, and it Sophia is. is out there watching them. You're supposed to be shooting them, not I was, watching I was, was going to say, aren't you supposed to be shooting them? Right. Got to like that. Tim Sia says, glad you guys are on earlier. Oh, good. Tim can join in the, the fun now. And, and while well, we got Tim here, while well, everybody's listening. That's right. Last last night, Friday it, night. Nope, two not, nights ago. Two nights ago. That's right. I lost track of time already. Two nights ago, Friday night, 8 o'clock, on the limb, on Facebook, is Tim Sias' live broadcast. Yep. Kind of like what we're doing here. And he takes and fields questions and has good interaction between everybody that's on the live stream checking out his show. So make sure Friday nights, if you got Friday nights, 8 o'clock, yep. free, go over there. And he's there for an hour. And just basically, like he's out of West Virginia, so you can ask him anything about turkey hunting. He's got it covered with his, you know... He'll ask you to show you how to run calls if you need to mm-hmm. get some information about it. And uh, yeah, he was on Friday night. I kind of listened in to him, mm-hmm. watch him get back into the swing. Um, he's counting down the days to hunting season for him and the youth season that is down there. Okay, he, he's got it counted down to the days and hours, oh, yeah, and minutes, and seconds. Pretty much, he's got it down okay. to the days. Which is how many? Uh, it was over a hundred, I think. I don't remember exactly. I'm, he'll type it in here yeah, in just a minute, I imagine. So, <laughs> all right, uh, we do have a question. Look at this: uh, right. uh, Vegas or five spot league? It is feet of field or a feet of scoring, if, a three spot, if I do remember correctly. I will tell you tomorrow next week when we find yes, out. Yes, I believe it's feet of. So, oh, she's out there whacking them. Ah, okay, old man, a Howard and autocorrect. Nice. Okay, we got a question. Okay, Bob and Cindy. Hey guys, can you recommend a good scope for a 450 Bushmaster? <laughs> you ask right there. Vortex Diamondback. Diamondback and, series. Yes, you know, and um, I thought Cabela's had 
don't. I, I thought they had the combo, and on the combo they do have the va the vortex combo with uh, oh, the the gun and the scope. And okay, I think the scope was a vortex. Yeah, this one actually is the Diamondback four by twelve forty, and it's got a dead hold uh, BOC reticle. And I bought this actually for a two seventy that that we've got that I want to set up. Uh, one that I got here, I don't know, a couple of years ago, and oh, okay. actually still trying to get it set up. <laughs> It hasn't gotten far. It hasn't gotten far. Um, but a Vortex scope, you can't beat You can't beat the glass. You can't beat the warranty that comes with them. Absolutely. And the Diamondback series is, it's not the entry-level series. It's the next step up uh, from the Crossfire series. You got the Crossfire, Diamondback, the Viper, and then the Razor series. And this is this is the, the second step up. Yeah. This is just... That'd a, be mid-range, I guess? Yeah. A good, hard uh, workhorse scope that'll get the job done. Uh, 100% lifetime unconditional warranty. You can run it over with a truck and send them the pieces and they'll get you a new one. Well, not on purpose. Don't, don't. <laughs> so. If you happen to leave it and it gets run over. Yeah. Now, now that service right there, you ask them and we actually showed you a product. Right, and we had it on hand. Uh, Tim Sias, you're right. 97 days for the youth and 99 days for the adults in West Virginia. Okay, so there you go. Turkey season in West Virginia. Yeah. Actually, Tim, I may be getting a hold of you here very soon. Uh, come September, I just found out that I might actually be within an hour and a half of your your uh, town. So, might have to have dinner one night or something. That will be for the QDMA Deer Steward 2 uh, workshop going on right there on, on the river uh, dividing Ohio and West Virginia. So Nice. Yep, I already checked the mileage, and it's I think it's an hour and 40 minutes to Hearts, West Virginia from the little town. Galop Gal Galopolis. Galliopolis or something like that. I, I can't remember exactly what it is, but it's down his way. So, Bob and Cindy say thanks. Yep, check them out. Uh, in in the Vortex scopes, those you can get. Oh, you can get those any uh, of your big box retailers, yeah, uh, outdoor stores. So, and you, if you watch them, they run sales on them. Yeah, and if you don't need that 450 uh, out on the range, or you're not doing any late season hunting with it, or out of state or anything like that, uh, wait. Probably, I'm going to say September ish. August, September, yeah, they start October, they'll start sales. running some, the big box stores start running some sales on them. So yeah. you can get save some money or sometimes they offer an incentive yeah, you to might get something to, else you, with it. You might be able to catch a January uh, end of the year, mm -hmm. get it off the shelf. That's deal. true. That's true. So Dan Anderson joining us today from Wisconsin. Thanks for tuning in. That's awesome. So, Wisconsin, West Virginia. Yeah, all Michigan. over the place. Gotta like it. Ohio. Ohio. There you go. And in points in between. Speaking of states. Did you see that? Uh, speaking of states, you're right. Did you see the, the big semi was loaded and ready to roll out of Arizona? Yes, I did. You read my mind right where we're going. Uh, to, it rolled out of Tucson, Arizona. Isn't there a song about that? Yes, well, that's Winslow, is. Arizona. Winslow, Arizona. <laughs> well, we can always change it to what we needed to do. And it wasn't a flatbed Ford either. No, it was not. <laughs> it was a big PSC semi heading it, to it Louisville, was, Kentucky. It was a big semi on the road. I wonder if he's there yet. How many days it takes? I don't know. I think they would probably be rolling into town probably Monday ish, Then they'll pull that rig inside the convention center on on Tuesday and start probably unloading and setting up. Yeah, I think. it's packed, packed with goodness. That's right. And speaking of, we're going to be at ATA starting Wednesday. We, will, Danny and I, will be in Louisville. Uh, we will be doing some live drops, just like we did last year. We'll yeah. be doing some live drops, you know, from uh, things around the the floor of the show. Yeah, hopefully we'll be hitting it a little more than we did last year. Hey, Josh, what's going on? So, what's happening, Dan Anderson, out there? But um, so yeah, some do some uh, live drops from the floor like we did last year. Absolutely. If you guys got any questions you want or things maybe you see that you want us to try to find, take a peek at that you think you'd be interested in, give us a shout. And yep. We'll track them down like last year was the uh, the see through blind. Yeah, from Primos, they had the see through blind. Uh, you couldn't see in it, but you could see through it from the inside out. That was, that was interesting. It is pretty cool. Yeah, though. you know, it, we we sat in that, and you know, you thought about it. it the, if you had a the black background, you you really could not see into that thing. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah, it I, was. I, you know, it was one of those things that was you had to see it to believe it. it yeah, I, right. And I'm like, yeah, this isn't going to work. But once we got there, and I'm like, you know, it's pretty cool. I don't think the white carpet did it justice. No, I think you need to brush it in around it. They uh, if they could have. Uh, against their wall there, brushed it in like yeah. I think it would have. It would have made a big difference. Yeah, yeah. The white carpet, you could see a little movement inside, but uh, you know that. And then the, the site, uh, the electronic site from Garmin, uh, the oh, yeah. site that was pretty cool. So the big things I've seen coming out this year, 
And I just got an email on one, and it was from a scent company. And I don't know if you've seen this, Danny, but they they the 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 thing with this is you if you're in the stand and you need to take a leak, okay, you collect it in a bottle and you mix it with something, and it takes away, uh, I guess, the humanness of it and turns it into deer lure. And okay, I, I, and I'm like, what people don't think of? You well, know? that well. You get a little time on your hands out in the woods. I'm <laughs> and you're sure thinking, it's right? Like, you know, and, and I don't want to go there either way if people talking about whether they pee out of their stand or whether they don't or whether they use lures or not. It's just, it's one of them things that made me scratch my head and go, hmm. Right, exactly. You so, know, and, and Wayne Sitton's joining us this afternoon. And, uh, you know, it, it's just one of those things. You sit, he, Whoever invented it yeah. probably was sitting there and like, how can hmm. I use my pee? Yeah. How can I use it to my advantage, right? <laughs> so, but then, like you just talked about, I've heard other people that they they've used their own urine for years, yeah, in scrapes and everything. Oh yeah, yeah, I've heard that too. So you know, it, but I want to I want to go by and talk to the guys because I want to I just want to see what it's all about. It's one of the things that's got my curiosity peaked. Uh, something else I want to look into was it called scent relief? Yes, it was. Thanks, Josh Hagerman. Yeah, and uh, scent relief. See the play on words there. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty good. It is good. It's, it's good. good. It's good marketing marketing yeah. slogan. So uh, another thing I'd like to take a look at is uh, some trail cams. I mean, as you guys know, Danny and I kind of bounce around with different cameras. I, I've been a Browning guy here lately, uh, but I, I do know that I've started looking more into the cell cams that, that take and you know use a cell signal and boost the picture yep. to your phone. And Moultrie has actually uh, sent me something to, to stop by and look at in the booth. And it's supposed to be a lower price point uh, to get you okay. in, into that in, into their cameras. they got some different things going on. So I thought I'd stop by and check those out, It too. seems to be the latest craze is having that instantaneous right Says to your phone. The for... microwave society, you know, we, wanna, we want those things right away. Um, but, you know, it does keep you out of the area if it works, so you don't have to go in and drop your scent, if we're talking about scent. Into the area to check your cameras. Right, exactly. So, and uh, David Boggs is feeling left out because he says Josh Hagerman and Wayne Sitton is in the house, so he better throw his name out there. <laughs> David Boggs. I was just uh, on a text with him earlier today, so we'll be seeing him down there as well. So, uh, Josh says, yeah, David, nice guy, absolutely. So, gut check. Gut check. Dean Elliott is the founder and owner of Gut Check. Haven't yep. used it before, but hearing details. Mm hmm. There's going to be a lot of things that we're going to hopefully get to see down there. And actually, uh, hopefully, after ATA, we're going to have some announcements to make. Uh, we're just, yeah, we've got to do, you know, besides going looking at all the yeah. stuff, we got a few some business meetings we got to take care of. Yep. We got it's dot, not all fun and games. Dot some I's and cross some T's. Right. It's it's not all fun and games down there. It's a, it's a grind. It is. So so next Sunday, when you see us, we're, we might look a little rough. We, we might want to drink about a pot of coffee each of uh, Hunter's Blend, so... But uh, I tell you what, we're bouncing up here close to our first break. Uh, we're going to step outside, take our first break, we come back. We're going to talk about uh, something that was just dropped out here in the news on CWD and then uh, something else I found interesting that I want to talk about uh, and, uh, on a local thread. Dean Elliott is joining the, the live stream right now. All right. Who is the founder of Gut Check. Nice. Good deal. All right. So I tell you what, let's step outside real quick. We'll be right back after this. PSE Archery has reinvented the way you buy bows. From now on, you can make the most educated decision possible by basing your bow choice specifically on your shooting needs and goals. All you need to do is ask yourself, what kind of shooter am I? What do I want to achieve? PSE will help find the right category for you. So, what kind of shooter are you? Find out at psearchery.com. Welcome back to the second segment of the Up North Journal podcast, sitting here on a Sunday afternoon. Due to the fact that we're going to be shooting some bows this evening. Danny, are you, are you ready to sling some targets? I'm always uh, ready to sling your targets. You, I'm, I'm reading what the gut check is. Okay. So, Josh. I know what this is because I read about it today. Actually, go, go right ahead. Okay. It's an arrow wrap with a pH indicator mm -hmm. that shows you on the wrap if it's a gut check or fatal shot. Okay. Actually, uh, Josh is posting that, and actually, I seen a photo today on Josh's page that was talking about that. So, 
Uh, okay, and, and Josh says live. No editing. Good thing I'm not on. <laughs> oh, we'll get you on coming oh, yeah, we'll get you at on the there. ATA. We're going to get you on, buddy. So <laughs> You're right, Tim. That is a heat wave when we get into 40 and 50 degree weather. Tim C is talking about the weather. You know what? Us guys from Michigan, when we get down there, Danny and I will probably be wearing shorts if it's 50 degrees. Yeah, darn wrong. Pretty close. You know, and T-shirts because that's just the way we roll. I mean, mm-hmm. when, when you stay up here in Michigan and it's... There's no ice. Zero. Well, actually, we've not had any ice. So no. that's something else we're looking forward to is actually getting out on the ice and doing some ice fishing here pretty soon. But uh, kind of shifting gears a All little right, bit. All right, so what, what do you got for me that was in the, the, the news this week that you wanted to talk about? Uh, it had to do with... Uh, I got to pull the article up here real quick, but it was basically a new uh, study that was being done on CWD. Did you happen to see it? No. Okay. So I will be the unopinionated person and listen to what you tell me about this article. Okay. Now, as I'm not prepared here. Oh, so. okay. Way to go. <laughs> I got too excited about ATA. So, uh oh, David Boggs has got to go do some business on his property. Uh oh, he's got a call. Poacher on the property. Got to roll. You know, it's strange that he brought that up. Uh, I got an email today from our camp that we had snowmobilers crossing our property. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I found that interesting. So, I guess uh, trespassing isn't just located or uh, confined to Indiana. Uh, No. Very, very not. All right. I know I was going to have trouble finding this. I'm not done yet. Put you on the spot, and that's what happens, right? So, Bruce Bruce Ronda Compton. Uh... Josh Hagman. Oh, gut shot, not gut check. I get it. All right. Got it. Okay, here it is. All right. Tell me about it. This was from um, Paul A. Smith, Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Okay. This uh, this is a story that was posted over on from Wisconsin. This study's being done in Wisconsin. Department of Natural Resource employees uh, were in the... Oh, that's from the picture. I'm sorry. Deer with chronic wasting disease died at three times the rate of uninfected animals, according to the first-year results of groundbreaking study of white-tailed deer in Wisconsin. The research found a 75% annual mortality rate of CWD-positive deer compared to 25% in those without the disease. A higher mortality of CWD-positive deer was attributed directly and indirectly to the disease, according to a Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources report. Not only did some of the deer die from prion disease, other sickened animals, which are less aware of their surroundings, uh, are less responsive to stimuli and less physically coordinated, become more susceptible to other causes of death, including hunting, predation, and vehicle collisions. The, the research called the Southwest Wisconsin CWD Deer and Predator Study is the first to assess the impacts of fatal disease in a dense population of whitetails in North America. It is being conducted by the DNR in two study areas, primarily in Iowa Iowa County. Initial results of the project started in, in January of 2017 and were released Wednesday during a presentation to the Natural Resource Board in Madison. Uh, scheduled to run for five years, the project is examining factors that could impact deer survival and deer population growth in southern Wisconsin. To perform the work, the researchers randomly captured deer, take tissue and blood samples for CWD and other testing, attach a GPS tracking collar, and release the animals. The deer are then monitored uh, at least daily for movements. If the mortality signal is received, the researchers travel to the site as quick as possible in an effort to determine the cause of death. The first year, the results span from January 2017 to 2018. January 2018. Researchers captured and collared 138 deer, 122 which were successfully tested for CWD, uh, said Dan Storm, the DNR deer and elk research scientist. Of the 122 whitetails tested, 12, which is 9.8%, were CWD positive. The CWD positive animals included seven females, five adults and two yearlings, and five males, three yearlings, and two juveniles. For the purpose of the study, the adults are defined as age two and older, yearlings less than two years of age, and juveniles eight to 12 months. Uh, Nine of the CWD positive deer died, including four directly from CWD, Storm said. A complete list of causes of mortality will be completed in the coming months, and several animals are still being evaluated. The Wisconsin Veterinary Diagnostic Laboratory in Madison is conducting all necropsies for the project. Uh, That's interesting. That's pretty much it. Uh, Storm said the sample size infected animals, 12, was smaller than desired. The agency is conducting additional trapping and collaring efforts this winter and hopes to more than double the number of animals, including CWD-positive deer, in the study. However, despite the small sample size, the difference in mortality rates of CWD-positive deer... And CWD negative deer was statistically significant, he said. 
Yeah. Okay. So. So yeah, it, it's they're they're uh, doing uh, their um, testing in mm-hmm. Wisconsin. Sounds like they're actually trying to find CWD or D deer to test on, and I wonder if that. Uh, they said they had twelve infected, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And out of those twelve, nine died. Right. Well, of the, of the twelve that they that were positive, nine of them died. Okay. And it was how many? I think they said five. I have to call it back up. Five were CWD positive. Oh, okay. Or died from CWD. Died from CWD. I I thought as of this year there was no cases known of a deer dying from directly of CWD. Oh. And I could be wrong on that. I'm just saying that's that's if memory serves me, that's kind of what I I remember. Well, that's kind of saying different if they say... The thing about this was, is as always, this thing created a... Firestorm? That's putting it nicely. <laughs> I was trying to think of a word. Go with firestorm? You know, on both sides. You know, pro, con, uh, people who believe it, don't believe in it, what have you. Uh, you know, like I said, I'm kind of still right in the middle on this, waiting for more scientific results to be put forth. But when you take a sm- such a small sample and put that out there as a big statement, I've got a problem with that. A little bit. Uh, Bruce Rhonda Compton, Mississippi Department of Wildlife, using check stations, have only two shown in 2018. I'm assuming that's CWD. Right. Uh, But anyways, yes, uh, when you publish something and kind of make it bigger than the sample size, you kind of make a a mountain out of the anthill. Right. Well, Because theoretically, right, we've got how many deer in this state, and then, or Wisconsin's got... A lot of deer as well. It, it, it's I'm I'm sure the feedback on that story was in, entertaining. I I I had to quit reading the the comments going back and forth, and this was published on several forums as well. So you had to quit reading. Yeah, I mean the headline says CWD positive deer die at three times the rate of non diseased animals in the Wisconsin study. Okay, you know I, I mean uh, well that's that's in your sample. Yeah, and the sample size was small. And it's going to be a five-year study. This is the first year the of a five-year year study. So actually, let's get a bigger sample size. Let's let this thing run its course. Let us see what, what it is, and then let's evaluate it. Instead of saying they die three times the rate right. in six years after the five years of study, then tell me what your numbers are. Right, right. Because th- this first year, three times the rate. And now what happens if for the next four years, let's just put zero. Right. None die. From CWD. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, three times the rate goes... Way down. Way down. Yeah. But you've already made the initial impact in the first year saying, oh, look what's happening. Yeah. You don't know the trend. You don't know You don't know what's going to happen. Right. I don't like that either as well. Yeah. If you're going to do, do a study, let the thing play out. Then let's see where the numbers fall. Let's, you know, let's evaluate the study. How, how was it done? Was it, you know, is there anything to skew it? Right. You know, I mean, there, there's there's 18 different things can go one way or the other. Well, that, uh, for uh, or against. What I always compare it to, and I'll take it from the auto industry. Mm-hmm. Do you ever notice how they, they when they say car, car sales are up or down for the month, mm-hmm. they always say one thing compared to last year. year. Yeah. Well, wait a second. Maybe last year was it. But what is the, the previous five years? Yeah. So then you get the trend. Are trending car sales going down? Trending car sales going up? Not According to us, one year ago today, the sale. Okay, that's I hate that. That just bugs me. Right. And it, and it and it's one of those things that you get a false narrative, but you've already made the impact. Something, and, and I could be completely wrong on this. I mean, I mean, my thinking may be skewed, but when I first read that, my my initial thought was, okay, if, if this is the case, you know, let's say that is the the trend, and this is the case across the board. And right. This is what we're oh, dealing okay. with. Then, okay. Yeah. Let's just say that's what we're dealing with. If if seventy five percent of the deer that are infected with CWD die, then wouldn't that disease slowly start dying out? Well, you would think it would wipe itself out. You know, I'm just Mother Nature will take care of itself usually, and if that's the case, then it'll it'll infect what it needs to, and then eventually it won't have anything to infect. Yeah, that to me that was my first initial thought, and I could be completely wrong on that. But I mean, that's just no, but it, it makes sense. You know, and, and like here in the in the state of the Michigan, it's like as of January first, there's no baiting in the mm-hmm. in the lower peninsula. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, I read a thread on that, and that they're asking kind of the same questions to the fact of, could you provide us some information as to why, how, when, mm-hmm. and not just you know, it, yeah. it's and 
it's like, here you go. Well, you can't do it anymore. Well, does it hurt? Doesn't it hurt? Do you have any studies? Do you have any scientific proof that says uh, by doing this, this will work? Because there's a lot of people out there saying, you guys are wiping my deer herd out, our mm-hmm. deer herd. Um, and But y- you don't have a reason to. Right. You're just kind of running around saying, hey, we got a problem. We got a problem. And this is what we're going to do. Throw gas on it. We're yeah. going to shoot everything. And now it's coming back so far that I've seen. A couple of counties that they said, oh, you're in the zone, have come back zero. So what right. happens in June? Next year, do they take them out of the zone? Right, yeah. right. Are they are out they, of, yeah, like, are you talking about Nuevo County? Yeah. That's, we know people who hunt there. Actually, quite a few that, that kind of follow us here uh, hunt up in that area. But that was their concern going in is the fact that they were on that periphery in what was called the management zone. But there is no, there's no cases of CWD right, exactly. there, and then there's, and, there's still none. So do, does that continue to stay within that, that management zone, or, or do they eliminate or that do county they from it? Redefine the boundaries as it goes. Right? Yeah. We tested there, nothing. You know, I would hope that they would say, okay, nothing showed up. We, mm-hmm. te- we you know, we, we tried, we tested it for a year. Yeah. You know, it, it goes back to wherever it was. Right. Right. You know, don't just keep putting the hot button on everything and and keeping it under a microscope when there's nothing there at the time. Yeah, well, it's going to be an interesting year here in Michigan. I mean, for, for those of you watching and listening that maybe don't know, here in Michigan, as as of right now, it's illegal in, in the whole lower peninsula of Michigan to either bait or supplemental feed or recreational feed deer in this state. So that's that was one of the regulations. So as of January 1st, that at midnight, that, that all became illegal to do. Yep. So... But now, go ahead and put a food plot out there. Well, we've 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 kind of discussed that as well. Well, it, it, I talked to a gentleman out there, and it, it, he grew up hunting on farms. Mm-hmm. So he's like, mm-hmm. he, he, he's having trouble seeing the difference whether right. he's hunting on the edge of a cornfield or somebody's putting corn out. Well, we've talked about the hay fields. Well, the hay fields when the well. farmer cuts it and rolls and bales that hay, if it's got prions on it, we're uh, oh yeah, deer has the, urinated or defecated on it. And all of a sudden, you take and truck that over to across the state. You know, somebody buys right. it, and you're taking semi loads of that hay to wherever. You're spreading that disease around. So. You, you know, but and then the, you you run into the little quirky things of it's not illegal to sell it, mm-hmm. but it's illegal to put it out now or hunt over it. But it's right. not illegal to sell it. Right. Yeah, I I have a huge problem with that as well because they sell that up in our area, and it's been banned I think since 2002 or three. Up in northeastern Michigan, where I hunt, there's a nice big sign on the right hand side of the highway when you're going up. Yeah, it says deer feed. Yeah, can't miss it. Hello, <laughs> so. you know, and it's and it's like okay, but it's it's one of those things, you know. It, it, come back at least tell us about the study. That's great. Yep. But don't imply anything yet. Right. Exactly. Say more to come. Yep. Right Stay now, tuned. Here's the numbers. Not just give me a big headline that says. Right. Guess what? Right. All right, I tell you what, we're bumping up here on our second break. We're going to step outside, take our second break. We come back, we're going to continue talking about deer, but in a different way. So we'll be right back after this. PSE Archery has always dominated the speed category. Now, the most revolutionary cam system ever to hit the market has perfected the shooting experience. Introducing PSE's Evolve Cam System, featuring extremely high let-off capabilities and the smoothest draw cycle in history. No other cam system has ever delivered this level of total comfort and total control. Experience PSE. Experience performance. Welcome back. Third segment of the show. Talking a little deer today. Talking a little Yeah, talk about some things that we heard. um, Yeah. Some articles you came up with and found. Um, So There was no one on Facebook that came across actually this morning and i found it kind of interesting and this this uh, i'm gonna throw this out for everybody because i think is it gets you to thinking a little bit and it was the i believe it was in oregon the state of oregon is now allowing people to take roadkill as food evidently it was illegal out there until here recently they passed a law and well if so you're here in michigan if you get a mm-hmm. tag mm-hmm. you're allowed to take it yes so so in Oregon they made it now yeah okay to do that and there was people saying oh I wouldn't eat roadkill other people said yeah oh, it doesn't bother me I'd eat roadkill and I'm of the persuasion I'll eat it as long as it's not ground into pavement burger well <laughs> you, you know you know you, you, sometimes uh, yeah sure some you get you yeah, can't it, it's instantaneous hamburger that's right. fine but some um, that are just hit or you, you come out it's been cold you can you know 
Why wouldn't you? Why Why wouldn't you take the opportunity? To get why the would tag? you waste that resource? Why would you? It's it'll be wasted there, except for the scavengers that come and get it. Yeah, but why not? I've had two. A uh, couple young couple hit hit a deer hit a hit a nice doe in front of my house about uh, six seven eight years ago ish. Okay, and you know the county sheriff come up lights and i'm like hey what's going on so i stick my head out the door oh i better i'm gonna go outside being nosy guy that nosy I am, neighbor you know? nosy, nosy yeah. neighbor mike huh yeah so i go out there and you know there's the doe laying on the pavement and you know it it wasn't destroyed by any stretch of the imagination they hit it and it fell and it died you know and uh the people said well well what are you gonna do with it and the cop says well do you want it and they're like no i don't want it he turns and looks at me and i go i'll take it <laughs> no problem he writes me the, the tag for it, and I drag it across the street, throw it up on the tailgate of my truck that I had at that time, and field dressed it right there and cut it, let it hang, and then uh, cleaned it up the next day and put it in for freezer. There you go. And then I hit one probably three or four years prior to that. I hit a, a buck down the road about, eh, not even a quarter mile. Okay. And it fell over into the ditch in my a friend of ours' front yard. He wasn't home. And uh, I'm like, oh, man, what am I going to do? You know, I mean, th- I got to call the cops. So I'll call them. County Sheriff comes out. And this is probably December-ish. I was actually taking Michael to a basketball game that he was going to run video for the school. Okay. And he was about 12. So th- actually, this is probably about 10, 12 years ago. So it's cold out in yeah. December. Yeah. And uh, so I run, drop him off as I call the police because it was a mile down the road to the school. Come back. I'm waiting for the police to show up or the county sheriff. And he comes in, pulls up. He's like, well, you want it? I go, well, that's what I called you for. Yes, I want the deer, you know? But the deer is still, It what it did is it, it ran into the side of my truck, into the front okay. fender on the driver's side, and it actually hit my truck. I didn't hit it. And it spun, and it clipped the door, and its right rear leg went under the tire. So you, okay, so you crushed broke, his leg. Broke his leg, and he's laying there suffering. Well, I'm like, please put this thing out of its misery. It's suffering here. And he's like, I can't. And he goes, I said, why? He goes, well... This is not the first deer call I've been on tonight. He says, actually, I'm out of shotgun shells. I'm like, well, you got a pistol. Shoot it. I have to file a report. In oh, you know? okay. And he goes, he looks at my license. He goes, well, you just live right over there. He said, go get your shotgun. Come down here and shoot it. I go, are you serious? He's like, yeah, like, okay. So you did? Yeah, I went and got the shotgun, come down there, and then standing right in front of the police officer, or the county sheriff, the sheriff. And, you know, I, I, I shot and put it out of its misery. And brought it home, did the same thing, you know. But wow. it's a little odd being in front of a county sheriff. What you think? You know, and, and, and taking, you know, finishing the deer off, you know, right in front of him. in my friend's yard who wasn't home at the time. Right. So, did you get it right there and leave it, leave the guts for your friend? No, no. But I did blame his brother for not killing that deer because uh, his brother actually was had seen that deer and, and actually missed it. Oh, it was very distinguishable because it only had. A rack, a half rack, and it was three point on one side. He's like, "Yeah, I missed that last week." I go, "Well, then, good. You can pay for my truck damage." <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so. you, you, if you would have took it, if you would have, if you would have done your due diligence and gotten that deer, yeah, yeah, exactly. So I blamed him. But for it. you know, I would not see a problem uh, taking a roadkill, uh, especially these people that are out there and, and need the meat. Yeah, absolutely. Why not? Yeah, I can't. I find it hard to believe that a state agency or a state government wouldn't allow people to to pick up roadkill you know i think it's that person's choice to figure out well is it salvageable or not you know i don't know what the reasons for it are right you know so we so you would you would take one sure have you ever taken one no okay just wondered no i was i was uh i was just i was just behind one that got hit over on donner okay and the deer was laying and the lady was holding it and cuddling it and (laughs) oh no i was like and the cop showed up and I was like, okay, you take care of it because you're gonna have to explain what you're about to do to this deer. And yeah, I'd have tell you, I'd have stopped and said, hey, if she ain't gonna take it, I'll take it. Uh, so nope, nope. Uh, but I would if if the chance arises. Sure, why not? Okay, all yeah. right. I just thought get, it was kind of interesting. Get some burger and some back straps. Right on. So wow, it's all didn't good. cost me an arrow <laughs> <laughs> or a shell, right? <laughs> so um, yeah, I got a question here. Uh, Benjamin Farrell asked, are we gonna shoot any 3D this year? Uh, if I do, it's going to be obviously later in the year. I know there's some animal uh, silhouette leagues there's going some on. Silhouette leagues out there, and and uh, we might if yeah, anything's possible. Yeah, you never can tell. Who knows what we're doing? So it's uh, right now we're just doing this. Uh, I think they call it three spot league, uh, the feta feta field type thing. Right. Not feta field. It's a feta three spot league is what it is. Okay. So 
It's 18 meters. 18 meters is 20. 19.8 yards. I was going to say, nine, was, <laughs> do the math. Yeah. 19.8 like, yards. 19.8 yep. yards. So, not 20, not 19.5. Right, right so. on. So, um, Dean Elliott asked, uh, uh, during the off season, you can put in, put out whatever you want down there. That's talking about West Virginia. Uh, you cannot use natural deer urine either. Even if it's ATA approved, I know that's a big thing right oh, now. Oh, that's a big thing is getting it ATA approved. And that was the thing about the scent relief. That was the big thing. The big push was the fact of CWD now being, what, 28 states that a lot of states ban deer lures, urine-based lures, even if they're ATA approved. Oh, I see So, going. yeah, now you're, you're using human urine to be able to mix it up with that whatever they've got and use it for deer lure. So that was the other thing that they mentioned with that. Um, he says, are, are you guys, uh, wait, no, wait, wait. they do allow food plots year round though. Okay, gotcha. Matt Howard says it's 20 yards. 20 yards. Maybe it is 20 yards. No. Maybe it's, I'm it's thinking. Nine, it's, if you do the conversion from meters, it's 19.6 okay. or 19.8. They might just round up at 20. Yeah. Being I indoors. I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll find out tonight. Yes, we will. <laughs> so it's all new to me. It is know? new to us. So, but uh, yeah, it, it's okay. Interesting. And I can see the, the play in there of not having to have it ATA approved. You're, right. a, you're actually producing it. Right. They're just giving you the additive to it. Right. Which is probably, a, I'm assuming, powder form. That I don't know. Well, either powder or liquid. You're, 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 the base is what you're creating. Right. Maybe you got to get a eight. Maybe you have to get ATA approved. I don't know. I've already been verified, so I know we're getting in. <laughs> so, right? Exactly. <laughs> so I guess maybe I am ATA approved. Who knows? So, uh, oh, Dean, you're the owner of Scent Relief. Well, then you can tell us. Missed that discussion of that. Okay, yeah, we talked about that right off top of the show. So uh, we we've got the owner right here that's texting into us. So yeah, the, the whole thought process behind this. Uh, is it is it a liquid you pour into it? Is it a powder? Um, you know, from what I've read about your product, that's exactly what we were just talking about. Is kind of the way uh, I understand it. And if I'm wrong, let me know, so that way we can uh, we can clear that up. But I tell you what, uh, while we're waiting on an answer from that, let's go ahead and take our last break. When we come back, we will find out, and All right. we'll discuss it a little further. So we'll be right back after this. Acceleration is part of PSE's DNA. PSE pioneered the speed movement. Now they've developed the Vapor category to help you find the most powerful bows on the market to fit you. High speed equates to intense power and building the momentum you need to be successful. Are you a Vapor shooter? Find out at PSEArchery.com. Welcome back. Last segment of the show. Man, we just had a bunch of people chiming in here on the live stream coming in. Uh, and actually, we were talking about scent relief. Yes. And, and it's actually uh, a, uh, the owner of the company who's online with us right Online, now. texting into us to the show. Uh, it's actually a, a double. It's One is a powder neutralizer and then a liquid additive. So there you go. There you go. Dean, uh, when we get down there, one of the three days, we're definitely going to come by and stop to you and talk to you about this because I, I do, I'm intrigued by it. I want to. It's interesting. It's interesting. I want to know about it. You know, it's I one know. of the things. Like I said at the beginning of the show, when I when I first read about this, I'm like, hmm. You know, it's, it's one of those things that make you go, hmm. And you know, here in Michigan, where I at least where I hunt, we're not allowed to put anything like that out. Right. I, I mean, not like his product, but anything urine based. You know. Uh, deer, deer urine, deer based. urine based. It's got to be ATA approved. So, that's but what if it's human based? I don't think I got to be ATA approved. <laughs> I'll get you. Eight. <laughs> We've already been through that, Danny. So, yeah, it's definitely something that's uh, that I want to check into. So, that's one of the things. And like we said, also some trail cameras that we want to look at this year. And uh, there's several other products that that we're definitely going to be in the booth in checking out. Uh, hopefully, learning a lot more about that. We'll be able to bring you guys here after we get back from ATA. So. David Bog says they pushed out over 30 and four were awesome. Okay. Must so be in the woods. For everybody on the podcast, if you remember, oh, back about two segments ago, we were talking, and David Boggs said he had to leave the show. He was listening to the live stream or watching the live stream because there was a problem on the property. And lo and behold, they uh, 
he got out or he found out that the police were chasing somebody. Yeah. A fugitive. A fugitive. A fugitive. And one of the guys was actually hunting on the property and they started, and they went through and they pushed a bunch of deer out and ruined his yeah. buddy's hunt. Right. Wow. <laughs> See a guy in an orange suit go running by. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's not Hunter's Orange. <laughs> right. It's bow season. It's not right. Actually down there, I don't think it is rifle season. I think it is oh, bow season. Oh, that's funny. So that is funny. That's good stuff. Uh, yes, sir. We'd like to talk more. We'll definitely stop by. Yeah. What's what? Uh, what booth number are you going to be in, Dean? Let us know. Yeah. Let us know where you're going to be at. And anybody else who is watching the live stream here can actually uh, stop by as well. They'll be able to find it real quick. So. If anybody else, anybody that's listening is going to the ATA. I know David Boggs will be there. David will be there. Josh will be there for sure. Uh, I don't know about any of the other guys and gals that are on here. So, is there anything in particular you want to see when you get down there? We've got about uh, oh. 10 to 15 ah, minutes here ooh, before we wrap ah, the show up. Yeah. Anything in particular? Um, nothing that I've seen so far that's come across. Come, there's a couple items that I might want to check out. A couple of booths, but something that's not. Nothing's hit me. Usually, when we walk the floor yeah. and I peek and look around, then something will hit me. But right now, you haven't seen anything that's been no, released early that people are talking that's about. Like a wow factor that hey, like last year, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the the blind was like the blind okay, was I the big see one. This right, Primo's blind was the huge one. So, but this year, um, not yet. Okay. Uh, so I'm hoping you get a chance to walk the floor like we usually do. Uh, something will catch my eye. Um, it's interesting. This one is a really kind of a cool thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, when I, I I go to the stand. I'm always carrying a yeah. thermos full of Hunter's Blend coffee. That's right. And what happens? Yeah, <laughs> you gotta go. You gotta go. So why not? Uh, so th- why not turn it into something valuable? Right. Something useful. Right. Wow, it's kind of cool. Now that I think about it. the more I think about it, the cooler it's getting. It's got a cool factor to it. Yeah. Right on. Uh, scent relief will be in booth number four thirty-five. That's right. At ATA four thirty-five. So, so but uh, yeah, hope you know. Typically. Uh, I got, obviously, I was looking at the PSE Evoke. Evoke. Yeah, the new Evoke. That, that'll be a, a can't wait to shoot that. We're, you know, we'll be spending some time down there in the shooting lanes, shooting some of the new gear, uh, talking about that as well. And hopefully, like I said, we'd be bringing you some live reports from from the floor, uh, talking with some other vendors uh, who happen to be out and about there. And right. And I'm just trying to think of anything that's really I haven't received. has anything. I know you talked about a little bit about the the, the Moultrie, uh, the camera, yeah, the camera. But uh, have you seen any like little gadgets or anything like that? Mm, I know there's one that I can't right oh, off the okay. top of my head. It just it, I can't think of it right this second. Um, the trail cameras have definitely got me intrigued this year, just because I, I we're just finally starting to get cell service into that area. I can actually use my phone sitting in a blind, which is a bad thing. Right, because I'm usually, you know, looking Got at my your phone. head in your phone. And yeah, you know, I'm doing, I'm doing one of these numbers here, like the, you know, my phone, and all of a sudden you look up and you know, there's a buck or a doe or whatever, and you, you, you you're busted. So, but with that being said, um, I did like to put a couple of these out and and see how they how they react and how how well the pictures are and, and see what you miss. Yeah, well, you know, we're looking. I still got cameras out running right now, even though season's over with. So. Oh, okay. So to add to the, the to the list of what it's converted to, mm-hmm. they can convert to acorn, corn, estrus, tarsal, and pine. Okay. Cover sense or attractive. Okay. Interesting. Pretty wild. Interesting. So. There's a little science. <laughs> there's a little science behind that one. Yeah. Right. Definitely. So. But uh, nope. Hopefully, we get some safe travels. We'll get some live reports, like we keep talking about from the people. Uh, like we said, when we're down there, and you guys out there that maybe hear something, just you know. Let us know. We'll start. Know. If we we'll got try time, to find it and uh, and and do something on it right. and show it to you. You know uh, that that works pretty well for the people who can't make it down. You know, because for those of you who are on the stream that don't know or the podcast ATA, uh, I was figuring now we've been there every year except two since two thousand and nine. I think right. so. You know, it it doesn't this get is boring. Our ninth be- one. It doesn't get boring. First of all, you, you you see people they haven't seen in a year. Right. It's good to see them again. Right. It's like you really haven't missed them. Right. It's like, and so you pick up, you talk, uh, you, you you look at the the new stuff that's out there, or or how people or what companies tweaking something. Right. So pretty cool. It it's is. always good to see. And besides, we get to go south, which and, is a good thing this time of year. In January, going south is sometimes good. And sometimes it's interesting. Right. <laughs> so hopefully. So- we see pavement all the way down there. Well, that's what the weather looks good right now, so I'm, I'm not anticipating any problems. That's what we like. 
smooth sailing down yeah. and smooth sailing back, and right. we're all good. You know, and talking about weather and things, you know, just kind of end things here, um, kind of on uh, the fishing side of things. We're still waiting on ice <laughs> here in Michigan. Uh, I do know they've had some ice up north, like at our deer camp. Okay. On the lake, they, they but it's it's came and then gone, and then it's coming back. Um, I don't think it's quite thick enough to get onto just yet. I do know they had a snowmobiler go through up on Long Lake. Remember we fished Long Lake? Yeah, we did. Three years, three summers, two summers ago. Three and summers ago. Uh, they had a, a lady go through up there on a snowmobile. So it's uh, well, it's not quite thick enough. We saw yet. the pictures last week from Little Bay to Knock with the guy with the travel trailer trying to drive right. on the ice. And that didn't work out so well. Yeah, so you know, for all you guys and gals who, who get out on the ice and, and partake in that sport, Make doggone sure that the ice is safe for you. They say no no ice is safe ice, but check the thickness before you get out there. Don't put yourself in jeopardy. Uh, you know, I mean, equipment can be replaced, but lives can't. So that's the important thing to remember when you guys get out there. So, But uh, other than that, um, hey, we've got a few more minutes here if we got any yeah, questions. Yeah, we got, let's see, let's see. Steve Cassidy, good show. Matt Howard, Danny, I'm working on the thing we discussed. Okay. Uh, Bruce, turkey season in South Carolina, March 20th. March 20th. Wow. On private land in April 1st on WMA. Wow, March 20th. Let's see if I can find anything real that's, interesting that's here before early. we go. Um, you know, I do, yeah, I do want to mention something here. Uh oh. Uh, a good friend of ours who runs the Squirrel Hunter uh, Facebook page. Yes. Bob Rich. Ah, oh, yeah. Over in Connecticut. Mr. Retiree. Well, I just, I've known him since 2008, I believe. And he, he served in the Navy, he was a CB. Yes, he was. And he was over at Adak Island in Alaska in the Aleutians. And he posted this picture this week of this circular hut building out in the Aleutians. He said, that was my cabin for a year. I owned it. And I'm like, huh? And, I, and he said, being out there, I don't know if it was just service people or if it was civilians as well, but they could claim a piece of land and own it. And then once they left the area, somebody else got to claim it. So while wow. he was there, it was his. That was his cabin. That was his domain for the year. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was pretty cool. That's that's kind of wild. And then some guy posted a picture of it. Obviously, you're shipping out. Yeah. So then you give up your claim to it. And yeah. And somebody then somebody coming in takes it. I guess so. And like I said, I don't know if it's civilians I was as well say, or not. Was that like a for servicemen only or? I don't know. That I never did find that out. But I thought that was that was pretty interesting because somebody had posted a picture of it here like this last week, and he's like, "That's the cabin I used to own." Oh Lord. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. So that that is pretty cool. Claim your own stake out there, homestead. Well, claim it for a year, right? Yeah. So I thought it was interesting. That is pretty cool. And yes, he did retire this week. So he did. He's that's now right. he's now on fixed income, and you have to buy him a coffee. I got to buy. I I can go over and buy him a coffee because he can't afford one. <laughs> is that what he said? No, but it's a retiree. They'll tell <laughs> oh, okay. you that every all time. Right. Gotcha. My boss retired, and all of a sudden he couldn't afford nothing. Right. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, I know, right? So, so yeah, it's uh. It's getting. It's January. It's a new year. Um, it should be interesting. Absolutely. We just try to try to get some ice. Turkey tags here are turkey now tags available. Available till February first to put in for the draw. Yep. If you're going to be hunting public land, are you? Don't know yet. We have we have some we have some things in the works that some, were some possibilities. Yep. But we got to secure that decision by the first of February. Otherwise, we you're going to put in be, for it. Yep. Otherwise, you're buying an over the counter private land tag. Yep. Correct. If that happens, you can go with me. There you go. Go up to the beautiful north country. That's right. See, if I had more time around my property and I could study and see if they were there all the time. I right. know they're there, but it's, yeah, but it's, it's pretty big. Tur- turkey season that time of year, there's probably still two feet of snow on the ground. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of snow on the ground. You know, that would definitely be a May hunt. And you probably still got snow in May. Uh, it, it Potential is there. You could always have a late, late um, melt off. Okay. So... Well, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and wrap up a little bit early here. Uh, I know we've run a little short, but uh, it's been one of them weeks. We haven't done a whole lot this week. Like I said, Changing I got... over a new year, we got to, yeah. you know, and we're, we've been getting ready to get head down to ATA like we do every year. And if you can see around the office, I've been packing up some of the gear and stuff and getting things ready, uh, labeling cables and stuff like that. I'm, uh, I had everything kind of tore apart when Danny came in. So And the, make sure it all fits in your vehicle. That's right. Hopefully. Right? It better. 
I hope so too. So, and uh, you know, and we'd be remiss if we didn't mention again Hunter's Blend Coffee, who has supported us this last yeah, year. Yeah, they they they've been good. You know what? We're gonna see them down there too. Actually, they will. They'll be. They got a booth down there, so we're gonna hook up with those guys and make sure and and see what uh, they've been up to in Ohio here for the last few months. But right, go over to Hunter's Blend dot uh, Hunter's Blend Coffee dot com and use the UNJ promo code. Just type in in all caps UNJ, UNJ and you'll save ten percent. Man, Howard will go order. turkey hunting with us. He will? That's what he said. I will go turkey I will go turkey hunting with you guys. All right. What a nice guy. He is a nice guy. He is. Very nice guy. Of course, if he sees how how you, how you run and gun with golf balls, he might not want to hunt with you. There's a trick to that. <laughs> there is. There's a story there. There's a it, it, and it's almost becoming a yearly tradition to, to to tell that story just before season. That's right. So you have to wait till April. That's how actually how how you and I met. Yes, it so. was. So over some turkeys and a few golf balls. Right. <laughs> so, so we'll we'll just kind of leave that there and uh, we'll talk about that later on. So Exactly. But I tell you what, it's been a it's been a great 2018, exciting start to 2019. Like I say, we're going to have some exciting things to talk about when we get back. We just we just got to wait another week or so here. Before, yeah. Before yeah. we can talk about it. Yeah. So it's all it's all good stuff. So potentially all good. Absolutely. Yeah, you're right. You invited yourself, Matt. Good job. <laughs> Come on up, Dan. Danny will take you up to the UP. Yeah. Just make sure you pack some good warm clothes, right? So, but, but anyways, yeah. Um, hopefully next week, uh, we won't be. Let's just stay away from the convention crud, and we'll be good. Yeah. And uh, I got that bad last year. We're gonna we're gonna drink a lot of water. Yep. We're gonna be flushing our system the entire time. Maybe we'll have to stop by uh, scent relief. Mix up a potion we right are there. Not, we are not getting the crud. That's all I, that's all I can say. Is we are not. So, uh, Dean, if you're still on, we'll stop by booth 435. We'll come over and check it out. We'll see you down there. I can't promise what day it'll be, but we will be by. He, so, says, he says, can't wait to meet you guys. So, it'll be a good time. And uh, for all the, the rest of you that are going to be at ATA, you know, you see us, you know, stop, shake our hand, say hello, as long as you're not sick, because we don't want the crud. Yeah, don't shake my hand. And, fist, uh, bump. fist bump. Fist bump. There we go. No shaking hands. Uh, lots nope. of good after hour uh, events going on as well. So we're going to be busy the whole the whole four days. Yeah, we're, we're going to be pretty busy. Uh, most likely, obviously, uh, we'll probably be in the area of PSE. Yep, a lot. Yep, uh, we will be on the floor. So if you're there, uh, check PSE area for us first. Right. Potentially, we'll be there. If not, then we are out on the floor. Yeah, so. and, and if you've got our, our personal numbers, just text us, shoot us a text, and we'll meet somewhere. So, yeah, exactly. Like to have lunch with some of you guys and gals if uh, the opportunity arises. So, but if you're heading that way, travel safe, and uh, we'll talk to you guys when we're down there. If not, I tell you what, for everybody on the podcast, we're going to go ahead and wrap up that portion of the show right now. So, uh, we'll be back again next week. Actually, we're going to have episode 499 and 500. Hopefully, uh, the podcast portion will be able to record while we're down there. Yep, exactly. That, that's the plan. We're going to pop our 500th episode while we're down there at ATA. That's I, I couldn't think of a better way to do it. Ah, it's going to be awesome. It will be. So for those of you on the podcast, y'all take care, and we'll talk to you in the middle of ATA next week. Take care. And don't forget, you can catch us in syndication at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on goodtalkradio.com. This episode was brought to you by PSE Archery, Carbon Express, Fourth Arrow Camera Arms, Wind Scent Hunting Scent, Killer Food Plots, Seeds, Supplements, and Attractants, Cabela's, Spot Shooters, Limb Walker Game Calls, Twisted Minds Bowstrings, Hunter's Blend Coffee, Antler Action, and Family Traditions Tree Stands. Thanks for listening, and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week on the Up North Journal.